the real racists don't believe you can do it. So we're gonna make it harder for you to do it so you can prove them wrong. <laughs> but I believe that conservatives and liberals figured out their insidious ways of being able to replicate liberalism in a way that always leads to anti-blackness. Supremacy, they always walk in supremacy. They will always walk in whiteness. What about me? Well, why can't it be this? Well, why can't it do this? Your reason doesn't, you don't, the struggles don't match. And the races should have their way and we shouldn't have this policy in place because giving you opportunities would undermine the belief in your capabilities that we already don't fucking believe in. Do you want to be black or do you want to be American? That brings us to why I've convened us here today, right? Um, uh, affirmative mm. action. Um, my my fellow learned Negroes. Um, <laughs> I listen. It is maddening, but it is not right. surprising at all for a number of reasons. Like it's just, it's just not. Like the reality is, we have a right. kangaroo court that is literally going to roll back every opportunity they get that comes in front of them to roll back a right a previously recognized. For, it's gone. Let's understand that. I've been said that from time, and that's not like, that's not me just thinking that because they're Republicans or the Republican majority. They have said as much. They have actually started peeling back the actual Mitch McConnell. doctrinal, the press. It. Yeah, that's what's happening, babe. So that's not. 40 years ago. Listen. Yeah. Yeah, um, so that's not surprising for that reason. And then as far as affirmative action in specific, they've always had it out for yeah. affirmative action. Affirmative action has been introduced two other times in American history, and they've gotten rid of it each time. And then as far for different reasons, they did. They introduced it in um, during the Reconstruction, you know, and then um, the most recent. And in the last, in the cases from like 2003, I think it's a, cr a case called Grutter versus Bollinger, um, where they, they upheld affirmative action, but the majority opinion called uh introduced what they call a sunset provision they were like basically yes we will be fine now that diversity is a compelling enough interest to survive strict scrutiny right so let's let me walk this back anywhere in this in in the supreme court anytime an opinion um a law that's being challenged can be found that it made a classification based on race it is subject to what they call strict scrutiny meaning it has to have the highest most compelling reason outside of race for why to have this right so in the case of affirmative but and i think this is important right the 14th amendment literally is there to help black people but just like how hate, hate crimes are always sold to us as though they're going to be for our benefit and then they're used against us same way with strict scrutiny being applied to affirmative action to help the white people for the equal protection that's supposed to be there for us but put that aside then Greta versus Bollinger in uh, the early in I think 2003 or 2004 the court said diversity is a compelling enough interest because everybody benefits they were like oh it's not just black people but white people and Asian people and everybody else benefits from being able to be in proximity with different cultures different you know races and ethnicities and so that's why they should have it but they said they wanted a sunset provision where they they conceived that in 25 years in 25 no years no <laughs> more racism in 25 years we will have done away with all all that bad it'll it'll have it'll sorted itself out and your girl rbg wrote a concurrence you know, um, she wrote a she wrote a concurrence in going into you know major detail. Uh, uh, you know, using international and comparative law to explain why she thinks that you know the sunset provision or she didn't she didn't sign on to the specific twenty five years of the sunset provision. But what she said is she thinks it should have some definite end date in the future. So I want to be clear: America ain't never been fucked. They two thousand three. They was they had a twenty five. They're about in keeping with what they wanted to do even before. We had this Republican-led Mickey Mouse operation. The good, the good justices, the good ones had it out for this too. So to the floor, fuck, fuck all that. Let me tell you something. We talk, <laughs> conscious just touched on it just a second ago. Forty years. Affirmative, this this affirmative action ruling was around for forty-five years. Forty-five years. That means that Black people have been denied education for longer than we have had access to it in this country. Period. Point blank. Period. So when you're talking about the, the, the idea, the overall idea of this entire thing is that if we remove race-based admissions, then everybody is at an equal playing field, quote unquote. Everybody is all merit. But what cannot be overstated is that my race is how I am perceived in the world. It affects every part of my life because I move through the world as a black woman. This will not change how I am perceived even to admissions committees, which remain mostly white at almost every university. 
when you read someone's name, white people will code that as, as, as your race. When you read someone's personal statement about where they come from, their address, if they come from an HBCU, people will, black people especially, will continue to be coded via their applications to these universities. They will continue to be denied based upon that, those simple things. So this won't change of, anything. Of course. I mean, yeah, because let's be clear, they're not, they're, you know, what they're, they're not getting rid of race being a consideration that you view a person. They're not coming, they're not coming up with a policy that says never consider someone's race against them to create a colorblind admission, yep. which is bullshit. But that's not what they're saying. What they are saying is that we have previously allowed for a positive, for us to consider positive. it a positive a diversity, a compelling interest. The court has recognized that this is a positive to have black people or to have other other um, uh, people of color or minorities, perceived minorities, you know, um, um, be admitted. What we're saying is now none of that positive shit. They're not saying, oh, you don't get to know that they're black or blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. What they're saying is, hey, we don't like that shit. And if if we had it our way, here's here's the thing. And 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 I, and I don't want to engage these people's straw man bullshit that they come up with all the all the just blatant racism and coonery that you see <laughs> happening around this. The reality is this: America is a racist and a racist country. Period. Point blank. That's the end of the T. That's been the history. That's the that's the present day. So the country recognized, hey, because this racist country that enslaved you, that subjected you to Jim Crow, that subjected you to a prison industrial complex, that is racist towards you in every facet will work overtime to ensure you never have these opportunities. We would never admit you because we would deny because of your race. We use that to keep you out. Mm -hmm. That is why we are saying, okay, we are, we are recognizing that and we are trying theoretically, theoretically, mm -hmm. and I do heavy on theoretically level the playing field because that's not real tea. Because the reality is affirmative action has benefited more white women than anybody fucking mm -hmm. else. That is just quite frankly what it is. So it's not about, and, and, and the way like white people and racists and coons alike will pretend that what it means is, is that black people who are not qualified, who are not capable, who don't believe, who, are, who don't deserve to be there again. No, what it means is you believe that innately mm -hmm. about all black people. We know you believe that. And so what we are saying is we are now putting a policy in place to rebut your presumptions. But the reality is there are very few of us. There are very, very few of us in any institution. Very few of us. And we have to be the fucking best to be there. And I will say this. I'm a person. I recognize racism for what it is. Racism is about dehumanizing us. Racism is about not recognizing the facts. So I don't feel compelled to like, oh, you, I didn't get into school in affirmative action. We've all been to school, you know, and experienced that. I just read Eli Mistel's uh, um, op-ed about it. You know, we all experience them perceiving our presence as that. But that's what race is going to do anyway. That's, hey, that's what race is on. That's the whole point. I think the beef is, though, is when you're able to have individuals to mobilize the authoritative perspective, like Clarence Thomas, and be yeah. able to take their personal resentment in the way they've been able to individually internalize black inferiority and be able to be the speaking feast or literally the black person in the room. And that's you can tell cool. that's the type of black person he pretty much been his entire life. For <laughs> me, when we talk about representation, I find that's to be what I want to make my, race, my, my racial illiteracy analysis set. A lot of times when we think about it in the 1960s, 60s, let's say it was 2% niggas at Harvard, 2% niggas at Yale, 2% yeah. niggas at, I'm saying, Dartmouth to Cornell. The fact that white people can recognize in 2023, they have to be around 10% black people in those schools, it makes them feel like they've been slighted on the level of representation and it make it feel like, you know what? My daddy only had to go to school with 2% of you niggas. Now my classroom got 15%. Something is wrong. And, and you ain't gonna never see that. And that's the craziest part is I'm sure that the numbers mm -hmm. are very similar to the two percent. Yeah. I'm confident that they know fifty fifteen percent and niggas that those are all of this, that, all of this is really league. that's the speaker point though. Speaker yeah, point. yeah, exactly. All, all of this the is really just boiling down to they want to all like you know I'm an epidemiologist. They want to all like matter. Hold on, Rebecca. Oh, Rebecca, was, uh, Rebecca, Rebecca. Yeah. Oh, the mic. They they yeah. want to all lives matter this um this whole thing. It could, even how we're talking right now, it's almost like when we were like, hey, Black Lives Matter, so let's go ahead and do this. It's not enough that we made our own schools because historically, you guys have always been challenging us, pushing us out, making us create our own. Now I wanna get mad at our universities and try to be like, well, what about this? And then create this or take away things that we put in order for us to be able to be seen at these other universities. It's just not fair. You wanna all lives matter this thing? Now we're sitting here on this panel Telling you, are you are you out your mind? Like this is why we're doing this. We gotta work six jobs. Historically, we've always had to work six six jobs. You took away 
right? Historically, you've took away our education. You didn't even want us to read or write or do anything. So now we got to do six jobs to show you that we're more intelligent. We're, we're doing all of this and that's still not enough. You guys want to be included into everything. Y'all ain't got to work as hard as us. You ain't got to do as much as us. We can't even, half of us can't even afford to go to H, even HBCUs. We're work, we got to do all of this stuff. It's so much that we got to do to even be included on this educational conversation. And it's just white folks wanting to take over. It's the supremacy. They always yeah. walk in supremacy. They will always walk in whiteness. What about me? Well, why can't it be this? Well, why can't it do this? Your reason doesn't, you don't, the struggles don't match. Like you were saying, Gabrielle, the math don't math. It's not, I'm not I getting think. the equation. It's, I'm not getting, I'm, there's no solution here. What you guys are doing is take, taking things away from us to make it much more harder. Yeah. And representation does not play on a level Representation does not operate on a level playing field. Representation does not level, it's not on a level playing field. So, if no. we're able to have legislation that is able to sensationalize the amount of white people that are led or admitted or given scholarships at black universities, and we can acknowledge the very existence of that black universities because black people were excluded from white institutions, to me, mm -hmm. it shows like, and when I say this, it's not liberalism in terms of bipartisanship, it's liberalism in terms of ideology, but I believe that conservatives and and liberals figured out their insidious ways of being able to replicate liberalism in a way that always leads to anti-blackness. That's Dang. how y'all was able to show that, hey, even in 2003 when we had the quote-unquote ju good justices, there was already some solidarity exactly. amongst the supremacists and sympathizing on anti-blackness. Because it's racism reinforcing racism, right? Because not only like we already know, we all know we work, we have to work so much harder to be in those rooms and whatever it is and that we, we have the, any black person I know in a classroom always has the most credentials to dance around the white people there that's the only way they could be in the room but even let's pretend it even was their world where they come up with this is what they say to us oh america is racist and we'll assume so if you america is racist about you letting y'all into schools and the admissions process and the educational opportunities so for that reason we we have this policy proposed in order to level that but that would lead the racists who already believe that you're inferior to them to further say you are inferior and don't deserve to be there. So we should thus have the racists should have their way and we shouldn't have this policy in place because giving you opportunities would undermine the belief in your capabilities that we already don't fucking believe in. Ain't that some shit? Yeah, Shout out the, to you, Unc. Yeah, the real, the real racists <laughs> are, the real racists <laughs> don't believe you can do it. So we're going to make it harder for you to do it so you can prove them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? The thing about white supremacy, it's most useful and hardest to uh, address tactic is white supremacy renders itself mm. invisible. Yeah. It, it, it makes it impossible to point out its action and what it's doing Unless it does, unless it kneels on a black man's neck for mm, 10 minutes but it, to kill him. Yeah. Like, and then everybody can be like, there it is. Uh -huh. and, and then we're like, hey, all right, so now that you see this, can we, can we follow, can you follow us back to like and policing black people a little bit more? Yeah. You know? The white supremacy is the death, but it's not the over policing that put the police there to do the exactly, killing. It has exactly. to render itself. The, I love that you, I love the way you phrase that, FD. It has to render itself invisible because then, once we once we as minorities no matter what group it is start bringing up the things that affect us because of our race then it is oh now you're using this as a cudgel using your race as a you want special treatment and whatnot regardless of the fact that it affects these things matter it affects how we move through the world so whiteness has to render itself invisible it has to render itself as a default because that is the only way it can straw man its way it can red hair in its yeah. way out of accountability that's the thing, like, see, I don't know how much y'all are on Twitter. I am not as much. <laughs> you, know, you know I am. <laughs> Smart people. So I just yeah, had, I, on Twitter. I, I got off Twitter in the last couple of weeks because I got in trouble from a, a handful of, of Anglo leftist folks for uh, calling Racism. out the, uh, we'll say, conspicuous nature of interracial relationships being overly represented oh, in, in, uh, in media. The swirl propaganda the is, swirl, pal is palpable. The, right. And so in, in the, the response I kept getting from white leftists is this sounds just like something a white supremacist <laughs> would say. Or, or if a white you person said this, right. If a white person said this, it would be blank, blank, blank. 
And that's the same logic they're using to attack affirmative action. Because in order for that logic to have any useful like case in, in this discussion, you have to believe that we're operating from a true place of equality and that my interest, a level playing field, and that my interest in seeing black representation that is more realistic and more relevant to the reality that the vast majority of black people experience is special treatment. And that's what they want trying to do. That's why, like, I never forget before he died, Rush Limbaugh popped up on the breakfast oh, club, which is the most surreal thing. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, and I and I tend not I tend For to sure go easier do. on the Breakfast Club than other folks, um, because I it's have like a Breakfast Club interview, and I know them first, so you know I I don't have no. Yeah, I'll take the heat. No, you won't. No, you won't. Not on no, not on this land. I'm still I'm still hoping for my Breakfast Club invite. I'm trying to become yeah, like right. the new. I ain't gonna cap it. I'm gonna pop my shit, but I'm waiting to. Hey, man, Charlemagne, listen, Charlemagne, when you see this, bro, we are so black. This is so black of you. <laughs> Hold on, but let me finish. Let me finish. I'm gonna tell them for you. <laughs> and so for the for and so to their credit, they're trying to have a conversation with Rush Limbaugh about racism. Because Rush Limbaugh, I don't know what made I mean, he was dying, so maybe he was like, let me just see see these niggas. <laughs> <last time."> um, <laughs> and so and so they're like almost almost there. And then Envy or Charlemagne, I can't remember who, talks about systemic racism, and the conversation basically ends. Because white folks, even the most racist white folks, they're so excited and happy to point out the racist among them and pillory them and put them out on the cross to yes. say, this is what we don't do. But as soon as you have try to have a conversation about the system of racism that they, they all participate it. in, it's like, nope, nope, I don't want to hear that. That's you not know, true. That's special treatment, et cetera, et cetera. Ooh, et cetera. Hey, speaking of them not wanting morality. to tell you, speaking of them not wanting you to point anything out, right? You know, I put out a video um, when this happened on, I was like, white women need to have a meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, and, and they do because at the end I was like, right, if we look at what's happening, right. Uh, abortion is a white woman's flagship issue. We know that black people and black and marginalized people will always be disproportionately impacted <laughs> by anything in America. But we know that abortion is a white lady's issue. We know how they feel about their abortion. Right. But yet Maybe. the majority of y'all, the majority of white women, white women are the only People mm -hmm. who consider themselves a marginalized group, and I'm emphasis on consider themselves because you were one of the largest voting blocks, largest and most powerful voting blocks in the country and people. So anyhow, but anyhow, they are the only ones, and in keeping with such, they are the only ones that vote ro like overwhelmingly Republican. Everybody else don't vote that way. Only right. them voting against what are there, and this is perceived interest because we have to have the conversation about whiteness and where they prioritize that over whatever you know gender. Oh, How, um. Right. So I said white women need to have a meeting because at the end of the day, y'all voting this way. Abortion just happened. And now affirmative action, which in reality benefits y'all more than anybody more else. So y'all need to talk. Y'all need to get on one accord. So, of course, you know, and, and I said, and also RBG, that's y'all's girl. But let's Don't go all the way there, though. I feel like I think that I think that to me, the selective outrage on race based affirmative action, it really makes my ass itch. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> in 2020, in 2020, when, uh, when when Donald Trump had the Platinum Plus plan and he acknowledged disparities in banking, he acknowledged disparities in health care, he acknowledged disparities in education. To me, why is that not him acknowledging affirmative action for white people? So yeah. I want to give five hundred <laughs> billion dollars to niggas. How is that not me acknowledging that there's a race based preference in the system of banking that allows for white people to be more likely to get a loan? <laughs> For housing or banking. Let me go back. Hey, bars, real oh, rap bars. You know what I'm it's like y'all, y'all bullshitting me. You feel me? Y'all bullshitting me. me. Okay, Foreign, you you feel like you you feel like you just you you could you could be pretty like. Bro, like I'm in the Bahamas. This sounds like some <laughs> this sounds <laughs> like some <laughs> <ain't> <laughs> shit to me. I'm on my Miami on leftist mafia shit right now. Listen, <laughs> like, that's listen, hilarious. I, yes, but no, like. No, 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 because I want to give you all the space to talk because this is a very, not, I, I ain't going to say that this is very America core <laughs> shit, um, but like, it is very America <laughs> core shit. I mean, core. like, given how, despite that though, I will say that college, of course, being a microcosm of just society in itself, mm -hmm. this is just one policy that emphasizes the anti-blackness then and really exposes how a lot of policies, a lot of laws, a lot of just legislation in general is in response and in reaction to just blackness in general. I mean, yes. like, why why do you have to get called to the bar, Limey? 
Like before that, you didn't have to. Like I mean, yeah. like there's so many different instances of which like they were just and like, don't wait, get me started on what they make too? you do to admit you. Because every Precisely. black person I know, every black person I know in New York had to to so. Let me just tell you all a little bit about getting admitted to be an attorney, right? You have to tell them yeah, yep. every fucking move your whole life, yeah, every goddamn thing, right? Now there's a there's a then you you go through you do this whole packet whatever whatever you send it to the character what do you call it the character and fitness right and they they assess you and by the time they assign you a person to do your interview with or whatever it's supposed to be before <clears throat> you're swearing up in some, uh, ceremony you're already fast tracked you're supposed to be approved by then it's like a formality every white person i know it was like a formality white people i know with duis and records it was a mm -hmm. three minute for that formality i had to interview three times because they because mm -hmm. they they running me down about why i owed sprint money in college and like regular broke shit. No, I swear, I swear to you, like just. But think about who that's gonna impact, right? Like, right. if they're telling you, oh, you have, you have an account on your collection, so you can't get admitted. What? Wait, I'm broke. I'm that's trying to get thing? a job and money. We're, we're looking at your credit report here, and it's indicates they that you're a nigger. Me, and it was a hey, don't get, and, don't get, wow. and do not no, get me started. It nigga, was nigga, a gatekeep. Yo, it was a gatekeeping black lady. Believe it or not, hey, the coon is all the time. Hey, hey. That's who I, oh, son, the watch this shit. Making. I'm not lying to you. This supposed, again, formality, right? Formality, right? Boom. I get there. I see, it, you know, the packets on the desk where it has the committee's, like, uh, recommendation and is approval, to put through to approval. This bitch closed the mm. fucking file, closed that, fuck that, and decides, why did I owe Sprint money in college? Why do I owe, why is my bill with National Grid not paid? Whatever it is, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm, bitch, I'm broke. What the fuck you talking like, That's why I'm trying to be a lawyer. Yeah. I want to, because it applies to what you're saying right now, I do want to circle back to what you said about white women needing to have a meeting. Because of what you just said right then, they have had that meeting. They have had that meeting. They have decided together as a unit that be it, they, though they do operate a, a duality of of womanhood and, and being able to co-op feminism they have come together and decided that whiteness is too powerful it is too much of a unifying force and socioeconomically politically to relinquish it to stand in solidarity with the rest of us but in that same vein what you just said about admissions their time is coming their time is coming because let me say something in the state of california it's already happening. One professor, I believe, is uh, suing USC and a couple other universities out there. It, it was a Forbes article about this two months ago. They had everybody talking about it. A professor is suing two different universities for um, um, gender discrimination against men in admissions scholarships. So he's trying to get rid of gender scholarships. Oh, that's, that's big. That's big. That's big. Oh, ooh, Jordan Peterson did it. I want y'all to know. <laughs> Men, 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 men have been white men have been taking challenges to the Supreme Court on and having that um be so, so that's that's also RBG's claim to fame is intermediate scrutiny for gender based classifications. So trust and believe white men rolled up there a while back. Um, I remember oh uh, I got to break out my go get in my book on my thing. There's a specific case. I'm trying to remember what it was. They created some law like white men. White men have maybe a high insurance or I don't know something. They went up. They been went up there talking about ah, 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 ah. all this. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. oh, baby, no. Hey, hey, but 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 I feel like at the core of it is like, hey, if I think that your mere presence brings down the value of a space and place, we got to deal with that. Yeah. Like, like 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 think about it. In the black community, we know I got to work ten times as hard to get to where you at. Regardless of that being a reality that we know that's been going on for generations, and generations, for generations in the white community is to say that hey, black people are unqualified. Mm -hmm. And specifically for 45 years, there's been a whole bunch of hardworking, well, way more qualified white folks that's been getting skipped out on for these unqualified ass niggas. Uh -huh. So when you think about that, you put it on the court, it's like, hey, peep game. Like you said, credential, like in grad school, I could dance around them white folks with any dance they want to do. I was right. way more qualified than all the white people I was in class with. You see, see what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm but that I'm, 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 I'm to Conscious's point. It didn't matter. Yeah. And to Conscious's point real quick, because it reminds me of this. The fact, yet again, the credit score mm -hmm. and the idea of credit is yet again in reaction mm -hmm. to blackness. Yeah. Like the, yeah. before then, like that wasn't even the case. And it goes back to like a more so overarching principle that I had to like really ruminate with while I was in the States after seeing people of my hue constantly being denigrated in just for existing us people that are darker than blue especially in the states i really want to know the same question that for had 
do you want to be black or do you want to be American? Mm. And it's mm. a very difficult quandary that a lot of people have to come across because as hard as it is to be American, is to not be black. Not be black. It's to not, you be know, black. and it's everything, right. everything responds to that. And as much and like I not to like start no, no, um, diaspora war real quick. But like a lot of the time, Ados, Joe, Ados, Ados, Ados. <laughs> Nigeria, <I> love... <laughs> you know, Yo. Alani, you don't know Yo, how this thing goes. But like the fact of the matter is, you know how they are. I, I can pop this shit brother, like I drop my, my mic. Sister. But I'm essentially, I'm essentially saying that just as white women will, will find ways to placate whiteness just for their proximity to it, will throw whatever womanhood their their femininity is second to their whiteness. Mm. In many ways, yeah. you have a lot of black people in the States, you will not find this of any surprise, where yeah. their blackness is secondary to their Americanness. And, and you know what and I find frustrating about that? Clarence is one of them. Mm. I just going to say, I just going to say, and that's Coons. So like, let me tell you what I find frustrating about Coons and their belief that they have that question to make is that you do, the thing about blackness is you don't have a, whether or not you're gonna be black or American, you don't have a choice in the views of white people that see white and American as synonymous. That's, that's the reality. Mm. That's the reason why every time it's convenient for him, Clarence have no problem invoking race and racism, right? Because here's the tea. Clarence, Clarence is quick to, when when Anita Hill accusations, all of a sudden he yep. remembers lynching, right? Yep. It's a high tech lynching, he black. He remember racial identity when shit like that happened, right? And what I find interesting, let me tell you, with, this is the problem with, with coon, like coonery, and internalized anti-blackness and wanting to be in proximity of whiteness, right? And just wanting white approval and hating oneself and it makes you blame your community for stuff that logically you know don't make sense. Don't make no fucking Clar sense. Clarence will talk till he blew in the motherfucking face about how affirmative action tainted his Yale legacy, blah, 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 because all the racists that he do, he refused to acknowledge his racist are the ones that believe he was there for that and don't deserve to fucking be there. But that has not stopped him from yeah. having his Republican billionaire sugar daddy Harlan Crow donate over a hundred fucking thousand dollars to Yale to make shit but in his I'll push up. back on that, Ole. I'll push back on that because you said that there is there is no choice in that regard. The essence of tokenism is that choice that that foreign said between being black or being american tokens who are typically the people who are it like that woman you described who are pulling up the ladder that they themselves ascended to get to that space to be the only one in that space that is the essence of it but the functionality of tokenism has because that's not the latter in their mind that because there's a difference in deeply in the spirit of what is a token and what is a coon because i'm sure many of we learned negroes have been the token in a room to black people to in, in a room oh, full of white sure. spaces i'm sure we all have i'm confident and I, I know every single one of us with a platform is that to several <laughs> thousand white people <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like, like, white person, no, but, but the thing about a coon is where the resentment is every black person derek bell talks about this and faces mm. at the bottom of the well when he talks about rules of racial standing every single black person is presented with the opportunity to coon or legitimize anti anti blackness by repeating white talking points we all have it what the coons problem is is not that they want to pull up the ladder because they don't perceive us as being on the same ladder their problem is that you're not playing the no, particular I don't game believe they truly see themselves i want to hear you out but then i want to respond go ahead uh, the functionality Gabriel. of it mm -hmm. is absolutely the awareness that you have to shut that fucking door behind you for anybody else as a coon as a token and that goes hand in hand i do believe there is a functional awareness of that of shutting that door behind you to any other black person any other minority who's coming after you so you can remain the only one in that space that is the white supremacist the, functionality of tokenism of cooning but when it comes to affirmative action though in specific and when it comes to clarence thomas understanding of affirmative action and if we really keep it g real about this is like we say, affirmative action is only in rhetoric. What? Listen, they're very interested in the appearances, in the appearance of rolling back all these things and whatever perceived as wins to us. But affirmative action has never been an application. Never. Something that has done a motherfucking thing for any of We all know to be in the room, you got to be the most decorated nigga around. They're not just letting, their understanding of what they think that is, is to be that. So the reality is Clarence Thomas is not even trying to, 
his world and a ladder that's pulled up are for, unfortunately are for the learned Negroes. Let's be honest. Like the niggas like us, like I'm still going to get into school. I got in every, you know what I mean? My children are going to get into school. Your children got into school. Y'all all went to school. We are not who they're talking about. So he's not even concerned about pulling up the ladder mm. underneath for those that followed the, the path. The he knows intense. they're fucking good. Yes, yeah. It's much, so, it's, it's different. So I think it's a both end uh, to kind yeah, of like try to marry. Her, her. Um, do both. Yeah. I think I think to, to try to marry uh, Ole and Gabrielle's um, points, it depends on what position the coon token mm. is in. Um, yeah. And I, I'm a, I'm gonna go with the coon over token because I think I agree with the fact that we've all yes, Seku. Hey, I, I, <laughs> you know what? You know what? You know what? You know what I feel like, hey, hey, the debater in me, the debater in me makes I want people to respond to what I'm saying and not going into your lexicon and your bullshit ass speaking points. So I'm gonna call you a white supremacist sympathizer or anti black apologist and force you to respond to what I just said instead of whatever you rehearsed about why who Uncle Tom really is or how Coon is you know what fuck you I don't wanna hear about that shit. You you are being a sympathizer of white supremacist respond. And to me I think that that is kind of the 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 great thing that a lot of black Republicans and black contrarians have been able to do, been able to take the very sentiments that people say on the surface level and say, you want to accept people for being people. Hey, conscious, you call yourself an ally of the, the trans people, but you don't want to let me be conservative. Yeah. That's the <laughs> you. Really, it's, I hate that argument no, so know, much. You know? like, like, FD, like, FD thinks and everybody he disagrees with is anti-black racist. Yo, and it's like, yo. come on, man. So this is what it is, right? I feel like there's a lot of layers to this. And one of those layers is white guilt. That, to me, is equal to our allies, right? And um, not with all of our allies, but white guilt is how they come into these spaces, especially when a lot of these, um, well, we, we have a lot of uh, officers killing people or when those, when that outrage is, is happening, it's very selective for them, right? In that season, they'll go look for a platform to follow. They'll be in the comment section like, oh my goodness, what can I do? How can I? And as soon as that dies down, Yes. They're trying to make suggestions on how you can be better, oh. who you need to bring on, how you need to be more black, what you need to do to include all of them. Yes. Like, I want to be included in Juneteenth. How can I be included? Go to work. Don't talk to me. <laughs> Go figure something out. <laughs> Drop something in my cash app. Okay? Like, just don't, don't. All of it. Yeah, so this yes. is how I feel about it. The, um, all of that. And, 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 and you know, and but in retrospect, too, when you look at it, these people, especially, and I don't know if they... I want to say they mean it, but they don't mean it. But I don't know. I can't speak for white folks. So I'm like, talk to yourself, have y'all meetings. But it's like when you go onto these platforms and you're a part of these platforms, they even, the white folks can't stop functioning in their whiteness. It will yeah. never be like, it will never be where they can just take it off. It's almost like, okay, Ole, shh, for a second. And it's like, okay, <laughs> Rebecca, Rebecca, I hear you, but... And especially me being a black being a black woman in the space, um, and then like sometimes I love my producer. He knows I love him. Sometimes I got to be like, "Hey, that wasn't okay." He's a white guy. I'm like, hey, that wasn't. Don't don't do that because yeah. you wouldn't talk to the other people here like that. Yeah. But there are sometimes it comes off just straight whiteness, and I'm, yeah. I need you to simmer that down when you're speaking to me. The, All right, mm -hmm. tone the whiteness down when you're talking to me. <laughs> the, one thing I want to uh, give uh, shout out to. I may have said this in the last video. I've said it some of the time. Shout out to um, Hank Green. YouTube OG, uh, Hank Green. Uh, I mean, dealing, I mean, dealing I with cancer. Up. Yeah, dealing with cancer right now. Um, God bless him. He too. said one. He said in my way back in the break, the first break bread. He said some of the realest shit about white people that I've I've ever heard. And this is why, I like, I wish white people would spend more time talking to each other about have those meetings, as you said. He was like the thing that I've realized being in these like white liberal spaces is. A lot of white people, they're not looking to solve the issues of racism. They're mm -hmm. looking to render its effect. Um, they're looking to create a situation where they don't have to think about it. Yeah. And for yeah. some of them, uh, for, yeah. for a select few, shout out to these select few, that means being anti-racist. And for others, it means censoring themselves or censoring, censoring black people whenever the issue becomes too hot for them to deal with in the moment. Yeah. They just want to not be able to think about it. And so yeah. when it's, you know, when it's normal racist stuff, they cannot think about it. That's why I always say, 
I, I, I'm of the mind that uh, Ron DeSantis could beat Joe Biden before Donald Trump can. The only reason Donald Trump mm, lost yeah. was because he was too obviously racist. And the, no, the white no, folks right. in the suburbs couldn't bring themselves to vote for that. But Ron DeSantis is much more um, low-key. Much more um, insidious. Much more insidious racism. Mm -hmm. is way more dangerous. Mm -hmm. And they will mm -hmm. vote for him mm -hmm. behind exactly. closed doors. Exactly. Uh, no That's matter exactly what we say. That's exactly why I know he yes. won't if, if, if Trump were to not beat DeSantis in the primary, he's, DeSantis will be Biden. And I, I feel very confident in that. Yeah. I, I hate using them as the as the as the the litmus, the litmus test, test though because they're both. <laughs> I hate using them as the litmus test because that, that's kind of the conversation that's brewing online right now. I hate using either one of them as a litmus test because let me say something. Even the wokest white person you know, the most leftist, what are are not willing to sacrifice any personal relationships, any familiar relationships, any kind of. They're not willing, really willing to put any true skin in the game in terms None. of having those conversations None. that FD is talking about about holding people to the fire about race. The wokest white person you know. The wokest one. I'm like the most Kangle, dashiki wear white guy somewhere is not willing to do Especially that. So that. regardless, that casual oh, racism is is to me as equal as what DeSantis and Trump both got going on. And this is what I appreciated by Afro pessimism when I was in college because it showed me how it was something real sexy and, 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 and real attractive to how anti-blackness work and it make you what people mm -hmm. always already buy into the fungibility of black people or you mm -hmm. already thinking about how can you flinch and make it where whatever black flesh is being fucked over they ain't got nothing to do with you so you can center yourself and make it where that's not me though you know what i'm saying or i think of my yeah. favorite meme my fav my, one of my favorite memes you know what i'm saying is is a is a paul mooney he's, he's a picture of paul mooney and the, and, the, and the meme says white people do not want to be blamed for their ancestors actions but they sure as hell want to hold on to what their ancestors left for them. And for right. me, when I think about yeah. that, that's really how whiteness and the white identity operate. It's being able to disidentify empathetically, sympathetically, financially, anything. So imagine they you being like able to take the tied. business, take the profits, lead the debt. Yeah. <laughs> but that is, that right is the unifying nature of anti-blackness consciously that is the unifying nature of anti-blackness because and that's also why it's inextricable from capitalism i love that you brought up the economic aspect of it because for capitalism to continue going on there has to be a permanent underclass so if everybody can unify around anti-blackness you keep a permanent mm -hmm. underclass and you keep those socioeconomic tables moving upward and away from black people who have historically always been the permanent underclass right. yeah what and then bring, how we started this, this off we're talking about that uh asian businesses in the black I mean, in, in, in asian businesses in the yes. black you know what i'm saying community and we yes. think about how policy not some uh uh pro-black pseudo uh i watched tanique rasheed and i'm on some hidden color shit no 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 i did some research showed i did some the policy and was able to show hey listen in the 1963 civil rights act then we had the Open Immigration Act of 64. Then we literally had where we had the, the, the American government outlaw any Chinese, you know what I'm saying, here coming into the country. Then the Korean government is able to say, hey, in order for you to send here out this country, it got you made by one of us first. So then we see 40 years later, 50 years later, what the impact is that. And it's like, okay, if we want to have a black owned business that wants to do nail hairs, we have to deal with that business right there. And then we get to yeah. see now in terms of coming back all full circle. So the same way that you are able to use policy to be able to give you these economic, you know what I'm saying, access to my community is the same system you were able to go and complain and say, hey, because these niggas is getting into this place right here, me as a well-meaning Asian that's way more qualified than them niggas, they taking something from me. And you know what I think is so funny and it was so <laughs> unfortunate like... about anti-blackness, right? Because... There, many many Asian people many Asian people that get it right that are not that are not racist or are not that recognize they do not fucking appreciate you leaning into these um um what is it the the uh the, the model minority the model the minority, minority the myth of the model minority the, and I was like wow it's this is myth. really a battle of myth. fucking stereotypes they really have like they're like uh, like they have a a select hand few of Asian people that want to live by this stereotype explaining how a stereotype about us is the reason why that a system should be away in order to benefit a stereotype about them. And 
I'm like, this is fucking nuts. I'm like, and you know what I think is so crazy about the level of privilege in it? Like, why anti-blackness will always be what it comes down to it? Because it's this idea, why does everybody but black people get to believe in ownership? Why does everybody else feel yeah, entitled yeah. Mm. and like they own and everything belongs to them beforehand? But we are not allowed to feel entitled or like we own the shit We're we We're special have. in every case we get if, into it. No, but if, you, we, if you do own and if you do succeed, you just got a little lucky. You right. know, somebody You're special. You should be so and you should be so fucking grateful. I always think that's interesting, right? Because in the case of them, right, you're the you're the you're going with this model minority stereotype, right? I'm like, I'm a fucking decorated academic. Google me, I got into every fucking you know, yeah, I yeah, applied yeah, to yeah. eleven law schools, I got in every fucking where I graduated with a triple honors, I dance circles around every motherfucking body, and they will still every affirmative action, every blah blah. You don't hear me, but I don't get to feel like and I don't feel like, by the way. I, I applied to Georgetown. I did not expect to. Yeah, I did not expect to get in. That was my top school or whatever. And I got in, and I was so shocked. And I immediately, in the same breath that I got in, oh, that's so great! Oh my god, I got in. I know I wasn't going there because I could pay for fucking that, right? But I didn't feel there was no part of me. I've never felt. You felt like, validated. I, 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 and I wouldn't have, but I wouldn't have felt if I didn't get in. I'm not like, what the fuck? Every school that didn't give me a full scholarship and others that I didn't feel like, oh, they owed me or this. I'm like, be for fucking mm. real life. That is a certain level of privilege and entitlement and how you view the world because you don't see, you truly don't see anybody else. At, like, are you living in this world? Like, you have A's? You think, oh, you have a G? You think there's nobody else? What You know what makes you competitive? You there's nobody else in this world turning up in the classroom. Like, hey, that's what they really hey, think. To me, I think. That's what they think. To me, I feel like to, to, to hit home on this anti-black analysis and the fungibility of blackness and black people, uh, the military academy exception in the uh, affirmative action to me was very telling. Um, to me, it says mm -hmm. that uh, diversity and the way that we can include black bodies in the spaces can never be good unless the institution of America benefits first and foremost, and niggas got to benefit last. So if yes. you're trying to experience a little upper mobility and get you a couple of degrees for you and your community, fuck that shit. You trying to take stuff for some white people. But I mean, if we you want to go be in the military, the, the Navy, the Air Force, ah, we looking for the increase of diversity. And we were not only looking for it, we would use it. It doesn't it, matter. It, it, race <laughs> how we include you. Like, it doesn't right. matter. Let's take a look at um, our own White House, right? When we mm. we have where um, Kamala Harris, right, who's the vice president. Mm. She's our black representation um, in the White House at this moment. And um, when... I'm talking about George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, all of that was hot, okay? It was brand right. new in these streets, okay? And what happened was, you know, COVID was at the same time. We were all dealing with this, and we understand that a lot of Asian hate was happening. We understand there was an influx. We started to see more of, you know, Asians getting beat up or attacked or um, blamed for bringing COVID here. Um, and that was all due to uh, the previous administration, Donald Trump. So they instantly recognized as we were screaming out in the streets that Black Lives Matter, as we were protesting amongst COVID, um, as we were getting shot with rubber bullets, um, as we were getting shot down by anti-Black people who blamed everything on Black Lives Matter, um, all of that was going on. That administration sat there and Kamala Harris herself, who was our Black representation, said, I do not think that America is racist. Um, and then turned that. around, but we'll and then he turned it's around good. and said, and created and signed and but, sat there an anti uh, uh, hate for Asians um, bill or something I'm glad, of the sort. I'm glad you brought this up. Yeah, yeah I'm so and glad I, you brought I think all that, this up. That's, that's a great example because, you know, the, even the people who are supposed to represent us in some way, shape, or form, even them, they'll sit there and, and they have to walk in some kind of whiteness or something close to it well, in order to, like... Well, is let's keep it to know. That's what I was about to say. Let's keep it G real, yeah. right? So let's go through the because I think Kamala's presence there illustrates several points. I think it illustrates one what Conscious was saying, right? The willingness they'll make this military carve out or whatever because how you serving it. Kamala is not there because black people like her. In fact, Kamala was chosen to be there right after black people demonstrated on wax that we don't. She decided <laughs> she was gonna. She decided she was gonna run for president. We said, Nah, you're a cop. Go sit down. You're a fucking prosecutor. Ass locking people up. And that is the reason because she is a. Oh, that's a will, oh, black woman, like, right, da, 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 prosecutor, lock niggas up because she serves the state's agenda. That is why Kamala is there, right? But 
Duh, to, to shoot another point though let's talk about it because Kamala is way more of a of a decorated lawyer and academic than fucking Joe Biden let's talk about something they talking about affirmative mm. action right they talking about affirmative <laughs> action no mm. let's talk about it because they talking about affirmative mm. action and being up at the bottom of the class and where white people is mm. Joe Biden was at the bottom of the class failed the bar and was a public defender for two seconds talk about so it. talk about <laughs> it Speak on. And let me the it. black let me woman that was at the top of her law school, Katanji, as at the top of her fucking law school class and decorated in every fucking kind of way for her to be on the Supreme Court, and for her to be chosen by that mediocre white man. But Joe Biden has only ever been mediocre. Only ever. The only, only ever. reason Joe Biden ever. is president is because of Donald fucking Trump. And because we didn't know what to do, and he gave a white America some familiarity from the from the from the Obama days, and Biden and B Obama has got himself as a moderate. So let's keep it G real. Joe Biden has tried to run for president a million and sixty fucking times, and he don't <laughs> never go nowhere. He is mid. He is mediocre. He's only ever been remarkably mediocre. But that mediocre white man is the president of the United States of America to be in a position to choose a much more impressive black woman for a lower position that everybody questioned her deserving this of. Uh, and I when when is the hold on, when oh, is the last time the the president hasn't aside from obama when's the last time the president has been like truly talented you know what i i'm i'm gonna i'm i'm gonna have to tip my hat to my to my to my crime bill brother saxophone playing clinton uh, oh shit uh, uh, clinton was mediocre too though office, i mean you know what i'm saying <laughs> like people game people game people game people game people game, 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 game maybe I think it's the something in me right but the, the way that Bill Clinton was sold to me in terms of his upbringing and what he did, it's like, hey, this white man from Arkansas, his mama was a... a was That's a, another was mediocre nigga. Uh, Bill, Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton is the... All wrong. Joe Bill Biden me. is a CVS brand, Rite Aid brand. Bill Clinton, Clinton. that's what he want to be. Let's keep it G-real. Mm -hmm. like, Clinton nah, is a mediocre... I, 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 I think I, Joe Biden is better than... I think, I think Joe Biden more decorated than George Bush. What well, yeah, hell? that's but what I'm saying. But like, we, we, we basically had the bars in hell. So we the had the hell. Who I said is Clinton is Bill Clinton himself. Bill Clinton was known for running around um, the campus, pulling bitches, walking them to their dorm. Da da da, gang yeah, yeah. Hillary, let's keep it real. Hillary is the one who always had the ambition and wanted to be there. She is like, hey, nigga, I got a plan. Let me come get a hey, come get on the winning team. Real life Hillary scandal. is the one, like it or not. Real life Hillary scandal. is the one man that was scandal. no, literally, no, that's literally it. Melly realizing it was easier to package fits, but that's what Bill Clinton is. And I will say, I'll give him this. Bill Clinton has some great speeches. He's I will I will always respect a good order. I thought he was in his bag with his speeches. He was given in the Monica Lewinsky man, scandal. Fuck me. Who came before? Who came before Reagan? Was that Carter? Corner. No, it was Nixon. No, it wasn't Nixon. No, I think it was. Nixon might have been. It, it fuck. It fuck around. Nixon might have been the last well qualified president. Damn. Now y'all going way too far. I know I conscious face, Sorry like, but like for real, like in, in terms of like, I'm just saying, like, so we're gonna get I'm away from. I don't you remember? Shit. We're getting away from. We're getting away from like the actual politics. Yeah. But just yeah. like to bring it back to affirmative action. Is no, what was the point I'm trying to make? No, no, just, action, it, mediocre motherfuckers get shit. Mediocre yeah, that's, man get the, that's that's my point. This the like the perfect case, the case study, the perfect case proof of case. What is it? Case something. Perfect proof of whatever. Yeah. There's a whatever. phrase there. I can't remember what it is for why affirmative action should be a thing. Is the fact that the last eight nine presidents have all been mediocre in every facet of their like existence except for Obama. Right. And it has you have to go back to Richard Nixon who was I think the last person that was an accomplished what that was a high man. level student. The problem is white people an accomplished person. mediocre. They, that's yeah. the problem. That's the they problem. Yeah. It's like they write the narrative. They get to write the narrative. So they get to decide that they For are the, the greats, universe. that they are this, to add all this extra law to it. That's what they do. Oh, if you get to, if you get to control the story and you get to decide what is great and what is elite, they never conceive what? of themselves as mediocre, as mid. They always conceive, they, they perceive themselves as truly innately, divinely special and deserving. And that's their <laughs> spot. And these are their institutions. And they are, they are, they are putting it on to you as a favor. Like they are grand. You should be, you're welcome. This thing that you innately, because this is their country. It, you know, I feel like we'd be on the anniversary of July 4th, right? The way that they see it, we know what they're celebrating when they talk about independence and freedom and who and blah, blah, blah. And whose country, who was free, who runs this. They perceive this as all of the shit is theirs. If all of this shit is yeah. mine, you should be so fucking lucky 
I give mm-hmm. you any motherfucking thing. And if I perceive you to be, I don't give a shit if there's three of y'all in a body of 10,000. That's three niggas too many. Because Definitely. I truly believe that all 10,000 <laughs> spots deserve to be occupied oh, by wow. white people. Because innately, I am divinely more talented and qualified and special than your black mm-hmm. ass. Than you. And that's how Carter operated. Because I bet, uh, listen, that's how President Carter operated. Oh, you want Jimmy Carter me. ass now? Yeah. Yeah, don't. <laughs> Listen, oh, we going, ooh, girl. You know, this is why you a Twitter villain. Hated gay people, hated black Jimmy people. Jimmy Carter? Be on Carter? I thought Jimmy Carter was You good really, one. let me tell you, you got some hot takes. He bet he good by comparison. No, the Jimmy problem with Carter is that he had the talent, but he just didn't use it. He used it for back. Yeah. Like, that's one thing that in particular makes me mad about it. Uh, any political scientist worth his worth will actually mm. talk about how Jim Carter is one of the most upsetting things about American presidentialism <laughs> because he yeah, actually had political talent. If you look at Henry Fairley's political talent, he had it. The only better one than him would have been Mahatma fucking Gandhi. But guess what? <laughs> this man, this man is one of the most upsetting. He, he chose to be mid. He had a conscious <laughs> choice it worked to be out. Missed. And worked that's the reason why it worked, yeah, it worked out. out. Yeah. For him. I, always, I always felt like history was not, is not particularly kind to him just because of... Um the things that he advocated for being, you know, you know, his environmental love and self and all these different things and yada, yada, yada. I feel like that's why they be dragging him. Yeah, Yeah, I always figure that's why they do that. We're probably about about 10 years out from Trump getting the same treatment that the Bushes are getting now because George Bush being Mm -hmm. able to be... This cuddly old sweet white man. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think well, let's, if we keep it real, look, can we, years, well, if we keep in a real conversation, let me want to talk about who I think are very influ- like very fundamental in that that propaganda switch, and it's the Obamas. It's yep. the Obamas. The Obamas yep. did more PR for George Bush than anybody else could have yep. fucking done it. Ed, you, the Obamas with the Michelle Obama and Michelle George Bush Michelle giving him candy at the speech. Oh, nigga. She's still getting dragged for that. Yeah. You yeah. 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 They love that shit. Every time I see getting, it, that's hey, viral. They love it. They didn't excuse me. Even my mama liked that bullshit. Yeah. Something rambling to bring up because we, we ain't brought it up yet. There is a intimate relationship behind how we were able to turn over, I mean, overrule affirmative action and overrule the, uh, uh, matter of fact, and I seen you talk about it only, I think on yeah. Twitter, uh, yeah. the, 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 the student loan forgiveness and thinking about mm. how the increase of black participation in higher education also led to the more uh, subsidized and unsubsidized loans that we was mm-hmm. getting. So for me, it's yeah. like, okay, if you have overruled these race-based admissions, fucking overrule these old race-based ass loans you gave me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Especially hey. Overrule my, my student loan debt. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna turn that. And let's not forget, and then I think the that the think student loan was day one, um, affirmative action was day two, and then the next day was uh, uh, queer gay. discrimination. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's basically what legal. It? Yeah. Oh yeah, that cake no, shit. Okay, affirmative shit. action was first. I, I think affirmative action was first, then student loans, then the gay uh, 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 the discrimination against queer. I, you know, I listen. They've really been on their bag with some evil shit so much. I even I almost forgot. That's right. I, I definitely you're fucking right. And let's let I let, I, I, don't think, I don't think I don't think the distra- oh, I do not it's think not- the Twitter limit on sharing and seeing information is a coincidence with that. I don't <laughs> think it's a coincidence. That three days back to back of fucking civil liberties being literally gutted and destroyed, literally. and everybody. Yeah, now all of a sudden, the fucking right wing propagandists that bought the app to keep them is like, oh, 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 hey, this app that you're supposed to use, they're I, gonna limit. You can't see nothing. I don't want you can't, you can't see nothing. Is also nothing. You can't see nothing. Nobody's gonna see your stuff. I don't even tweet like that, but I go on there to see the conversations. You know, I'm nosy, so I wanna, I wanna, I wanna read the threads. But yes, you're right. The, Back to back, these things are happening. There are people, a lot of people are being stripped. They're hurting us. A lot of the movement that we have that's supposed to be considered forward, which is like literally just a little toe tap in, mm-hmm. in, in, in the right direction. But they're taking that away from us. So where, where are we going to, how are we starting? What are we going to do? Like, how are we, we supposed to keep riding in the streets? They want us to keep coming out here just being crazy and burning shit. And just like, <laughs> seriously, they want that from us. They do. Twitter being down is helping Biden though, because let me tell you something. He's starting to spiral. That that media clip circulating, going viral and whatnot of of a reporter asking him about how he felt about essentially providing quote unquote false hope to millions of Americans suffering under student debt. He you know shouted at him, oh I the Republicans and I didn't do anything. All Twitter being down is helping him in that regard. But don't get me started on student debt because that also tracks back to the mindset around affirmative action. Because you cannot say that black people occupying these spaces are all 
all just being given handouts and all just being, you know, they're special and whatnot, when we can't, and, and aren't deserving of their positions, okay, or being given special treatment, being able to go to school for free, because, and then, and then at the same time, ignore the fact that we carry the majority of student debt. It is a prominent myth. In fact, I had a viral tweet uh, last week about it. It's a prominent myth, and I've heard it said to my face before. A lot of white people believe that black people go to school for free in this country. <laughs> you hear that a mm, lot in the South. Crazy. You hear that a lot in the South. They Let me tell you and, something. And, and, and it, it's the same thing about Native American students as well. They believe they believe that HBCUs are havens for black people to be able to go to school for free. I, this is a true I belief think, I've heard all my life. I, I need know. us to understand that white people, racist in specific. Let me be clear. Because, you know, I don't need y'all to come tell me. Not me. I get it. <laughs> uh, ra <laughs> Racists are quite literally invested in making you believe that they have a, a non-race-based reason for why they, they, they move away towards you, why they conduct themselves this yes. way. Listen to me and listen yeah. to me good. There's no motherfucking way white people in any large number truly believe that niggas are going to school for free. They wouldn't allow it. <laughs> you see how they can't? Are you fucking crazy? You see how they acting hey, about the thoughts the that two of us are in class? Mm -hmm. Nah, but that's the, to, to me, I think that the two things, you know, I like buzzwords. So the two things I've been keep on repeating for the last couple of days is legal illiteracy and racial illiteracy. You don't know how the law works. You don't know how race works. So you're just making a whole bunch of wild ass claims. Making shit up. Making you know shit up. And, making and the, the, the shit wildest up. shit though is that the concept of affirmative action is based on the fact that the government has done this shit for white people the whole time. Yeah, you know, yes, going back literally. to the to the 1900s, um, uh, or not 19, but like the earliest night, earlier 19th century. One of the things, um, shout out to uh, Pascal Robert, because I always fuck up his name. Um, at this revolution podcast, put me on this book talking about the Italian, the, the growth of Italian Americans and how Italian Americans, like all that mob mafia shit, was because like they was they were hood when they got here because they were being discriminated against because they were too close to niggas according to white people at the time. Um, yeah. And so Italian Americans were getting uh, were communities were as bad as any black community you can think of now at the time. And then the government started giving them money. Yeah, and started a rep. Oh, baby, what, baby, you don't know it here, but in th in this land, you are white. You yes, can't be with you we gonna work this out for y'all. <laughs> and so they got all these set aside programs for decades. The Irish, the same thing. Like pretty much every white population has benefited from government um, investment. Um, at some point in time, over you know hundreds of years ago, while we were still asking for just the right to not die in the street, right and. Uh, and, and that are. was like that was something that King talked about. Like the the video, the clip I put in the, the conservative video, the first one that I love the most is King in his bag at what I'm assuming is a black church when he's like, "We're coming to Washington D.C. to get our check," because he's like, "Yo, you gave this shit to everybody else already that yeah. didn't go through what we went through." So y'all that... niggas owe us based off that alone. Yeah. But that speaks to, I mean, it, I just love what consciously, I got to go back to it. It speaks to what consciously was saying about like the socioeconomic impact of anti-blackness. There's a book, um, it's called uh, Working Towards Whiteness. And it speaks to just what you were saying, FD. I think Italians were not really considered white until roughly like the 1950s, mm -hmm. 1960s, around that area and whatnot. Because just like many other immigrant groups who came here, as time went on, it, it became more politically expedient to have them included in whiteness. Even if you look at like U.S. census rates and whatnot in terms of how race is classified, that changes roughly every 10 years or so, yeah. how people are classified and whatnot. It changes because it's a tool. Whiteness is a functionality. It's a tool. These things are not mm -hmm. real, mm -hmm. but they have real world consequences. And so when it became, and then I always tell people, especially in the, in the conversations that we're all having in terms of um, the labor unions and whatnot, the South used to be a union stronghold until segregation happened. And they saw that whites were unifying with black in order to be able to get their labor rights, to be able to get, you know, a, a quality living and good um, working hours and whatnot. And then they said, you know what? You want to be unified with these niggas? <laughs> I mean, you want them around your daughters? Head, if that's real on that, we'll give you some money. Right. 
But we'll take we'll take care of y'all, but chill on all that with that with with the. Dude. But that's the right. whole that's the whole purpose of whiteness as a construct within capitalism, right? Because the idea is white it, it is to white people's benefit. It is to white people's benefit, but especially working class white people to be in yes. solidarity to, with us. The policies and the yes. things that we want, they are <laughs> suffering under the same system as us. But if you live in a country that then says, ah, don't focus on that, fuck all that capitalism in the way. Let's talk about whiteness and privilege and convinces them that what's actually happening is your your rights and the things that you should have. And the reason why you're in poverty and why you're struggling working class white man is that these black people and these these minorities are taking from you and then they focus it there so yeah that's the vested interest it'd be, it be the ones from like literally like when we see DeSantis come out right DeSantis is taking a whole bunch of things that's affecting y'all too um out there in Florida right mm -hmm. I'm from Florida so I know but it'd be the ones that live in west of nowhere Fucksville and they literally, no teeth, no insurance, nothing. <laughs> just they nothing in the front. Toothless. They can't even ain't got can't even afford internet. Don't can't nothing. And, got nothing. Not, not just can't afford internet, because I'm in Georgia now. I remember that with Stacey Abrams. And they haven't even bothered to build access to internet, to internet where they so live. They're in communities that are being just like um, these other communities where uh, 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 they make internet like a unaccessible for a lot of the kids. And and here's the thing: like we know it's a problem. The internet is a damn utility. Y'all issues is back there. Y'all live in them backwoods. Ain't got no kind of... Y'all still using them little TV with the turners on it. Hey. But y'all out here saying that black folks is taken away from you because Ron DeSantis said that. Mm -hmm. And you see what I'm saying? Like, we all in the same issues, but because whiteness is what it is, like you said, people will function in whiteness. They make it a supremacy. They make it supreme. Uh, you know, and if they look at black people, they no matter what state they're in, like, ain't got no home, ain't got no roof. But yeah. they're looking at you and being like, you are inferior to me. At least I'm not yeah. a nigga. I never yeah, forget. I'm I gotta, not, I gotta, I'm not a nigga. I got I to gotta run because I got to jump on with, with somebody else in a second. But um, I never forget the scene from uh, fucking... Uh, <laughs> I, got, I got some of you. Yeah, you blank that, I got you, goddamn. Go, go, go ahead, Conscious. I'm going hey, to look hey, up this movie real quick. Did y'all see uh, <laughs> California Governor Newsom getting on the... Uh, Fox News do head about conservative states and uh, liberal states and the economic, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, visions of these states. Yeah, he was saying, yeah. so, so, so uh, you you take Mississippi's economic, you know what I'm saying, uh, what's it called, over California's. And when I say he got it, I'm gonna go find a clip and post it. When I tell y'all this man got in their ass, and for me, it made me think about all the various ways as a Southerner, I've been indoctrinated to think about you Northern Yankees and how y'all live. Up yes, you know talk living? about it. In talk terms about of it. like, hey, we have a cheaper living down here because we better this, that, and the other. But now I learn now, it's like, no, we have a cheaper living down here because you suck at building economic infrastructure. We have a cheaper living down here it's because you, motherfucker, you getting paid and pimped out by them lobbyists, by them interest groups, and by them bureaucracies. You know what I'm saying? You don't tell me that part. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm into? Listen, all that old socialism bullshit shit you talk about and getting out of living on the state living on the government hey the red states live on government assistance way more than blue states Goddamn, they hey, living off the blue states your state so poorly ran as soon as a hurricane or a tornado hit that motherfucker you know who you gonna call federal New jersey because <laughs> hey. Hey. Hey, you know i gotta speak on it for louisiana one thing about it just what you said i'm born and raised in the south consciously from texas i'm born and raised in louisiana i'm born and raised here 61 percent of babies born in the state of louisiana are born under medicaid 61 percent. we are one of, we are i think we duke it out every other year with mississippi over who is the poorest state mm. and let me tell you something mm. it's so easy going back to what rebecca said it's so easy to put rural rule white people as the face of racism because it, it makes you feel like okay well that's just those those people down there in the south and so that's those red state people it's not really a problem out here and whatnot sometimes we have to really interrogate they're poor anyway so who cares nobody's gonna really interrogate that no cool. i have gone to, i was the only black girl in my epidemiology program at Tulane University School of Public Health Tropical Medicine, I think it had like a 10% acceptance rate the last time I checked. I was the only black girl in that program. And I have seen too much from rich white boys who feel as though having anybody who doesn't look like them in a space is something being stolen from their people, who feel is the who feel the same way those rural rednecks feel about black folks. It's too it's a unifying factor. It's just that rural white people are the face of it. So DeSantis knows what he's doing, appealing to the base, but he also he also knows exactly 
exactly who the entirety of who he is talking to. Mm-hmm. They're not the only. They're, they're just the rural white folks are just more likely to publicly espouse it. But DeSantis knows who he's talking to. We are us down here in the South. We peep that bullshit because we inherited this battle from our parents, our grandparents. We know the dog whistles too. We know who you talking to. We know who you talking to. We know what you saying. We hear that shit in the South. We not dumb down here. We know what the fuck you doing. Yeah. I think, I think so, the reality is, yeah, after you go. Let me, let me yeah, because I'm about to yeah, run. So the movie up. was, uh, and, and uh, Gary o just helped me. It was Mississippi Burning. Oh. And yes. it's Gary Oldman mm. talking about his father. The, 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 the more of the story was that he had done something horrible. And the whole point was, I may be poor, whatever, all these horrible things, but at least I'm not a nigga. And if, if a nigga's mm. higher than me, then, then then I can't stand that. And something has to be done about mm. it. And that tracks throughout so much of like the problems of America and explicitly the problems of white people. Because um, mm. I was talking to, I'm working on this prison uh, video and I talked to a homeboy, a very radical brother named Two Black from the Black Power Media Network. He was talking about he doesn't like how people talk about prison as slavery because 65, 70% of all prisoners are white men and like that, that just doesn't job with him, but it speaks to the way that I don't know if it was you Ole or somebody said white people don't care about other white people. They care about whiteness. Yep, that was me. Okay. And like, that's such a powerful like thing to consider and why they need to start having their, the meetings because yes. we may be shouting the loudest about it. We may be getting the most um, coins off or, or getting the most uh, tweets off about the shit. But at the end of the day, everything we're arguing and fighting about is affecting the majority of white people way at a, at a much higher number, not more proportionally, yeah. but like the raw numbers of this shit, the raw numbers of people suffering under these systems are middle to lower middle to impoverished white Americans. Yeah. And they are busy fighting us fighting women in general, fighting queer people, fighting immigrants. They fighting everybody, but they fucking rich uncles. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, and it needs to stop. And I think that's the problem with teaching people. I, I got to get to up dis- out of here, yo. Bye. Bye. I don't. I think that's the problem with teaching people to to not to despise the system, but to despise their place in the system. Like everybody yes. is constantly trying to replicate. They love, they revere these systems. They love capitalism. They love this. They love all these different things. What they have a problem with there is where they're at in it, right? You see these people, you know, the few, the handful of Asians they're using to push this model minority myth, right? Their problem is not an in systemic uh, uh, institutional disadvantage. Their problem is not any of that. Their problem is the idea that any idea that black people could be where they're at because they recognize a hierarchy where whiteness is at the top and they're trying to be in proximity to whiteness so any like every, any level of inference of being a black people being hell god forbid in your perceived mind above you in some way is a disrespect the way you get but the problem is they're not challenging the system and i think that's also the second part is the problem with always teaching we have to stop teaching white people and non-black people and, and, and people who are supposedly to be our allies that they're doing us a favor. I think we need to dad yeah. allyship, like the idea, because it leads them to believe that they are being altruistic good people and going out of their way to support something out of the goodness out of their heart because they care about you. They're so good to care about you, as opposed to caring about themselves. I'd rather people just lean into selfish rhetoric and say, actually, no, no, no. This system harms you. You're being fucked too. And so you should be out here because it's for you, not because you're doing it for me, not because I need to convince you to be good. But that speaks to the greater issue about the narrative around racism, around anti-blackness, because the general belief, even after everything we've experienced from like, what, 2015 with uh, to now, even after George Floyd, is that racism is something that is simply just a mindset, a difference of beliefs, a, a, a personal feeling about black people or people of color. And that is something that affects you at the individual level. And you need to work on that. And you need to be more learned as opposed to what it actually is, which is a systematic dehumanization of a group of people for socioeconomic gain and profit yeah that's until right. you until you interrogate that then the then what you just mentioned cannot change because yeah if they believe that racism is something that just affects the individual okay well i don't feel hatred toward this person or what i don't feel i don't have any hatred hateful feelings or whatever then i'm not racist that's not what this is yeah and that's why they can't meaningfully interrogate what is going on and why they feel the way that they do and it's not but also at the same time it's not a it's not i don't like to lean on ignorance this is not yeah. these, these people do the same numbers yeah. that we do in fact last month there was a viral article uh 
young student, young Asian student, 18 years old, applied to, of course, this basic Ivy League schools. And um, one of the schools he applied to was Berkeley. Berkeley is 30% Asian. So you're probably just a loser that you didn't get that you didn't get in there. But here you are on TV blaming black people mm -hmm. who are probably I think somebody put up to sit there like 1.2% of that university. It's easier. But it's a black person's fault that you didn't get in. Now you're on TV being given a nationwide platform because about why you didn't get into Berkeley. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because in a society, in a white supremacist society that prioritizes or that centers and that celebrates whiteness as the default whiteness is what is great, they will not even entertain you suggesting that the 60% of white people there, that any white person is undeserving of the spot. But they will jump at you saying it about black people and ultimately what you truly care about is unseating somebody. You know what I mean? In your mind. Period. Yeah. Because what do you think this is? Like, what do you think this is? Like, first of all, in any in any school that you apply to, what in-state students are going to get preference? Uh, um, legacy students are going to get preference. There's a certain amount of money allotted for athletes to be able to come, and they're going to be on scholarship. Like, there's so many other things that go into that. Like, what do you think this is? Hey, what do you think? What is like, what? going on? Somebody talking about em employees, uh, uh, legacy kids, and donors. Period. It's like, I think that that makes up well more than black population at most of, at most of these D1 universities, especially the Ivy League. So it's like, yeah. if your daddy gave $5 million and your ass got a 2.5 GPA and you have horrible scores mm -hmm. in the ACT and SAT, but it don't matter because daddy gave how many million? Oh, you get yeah. a building after you and get to get into the school. Okay. Yeah. Your mama been working here for 40 years. You feel what I'm saying? She, she been a, 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 a D student your entire life. But you get to get in your library because, hey, your mama, you know what I'm saying, shit, work over here in the English department. Oh, and you, oh, uh, shit, b before you was even born, you know what I'm saying, your great great granddaddy was already on the, you know what I'm saying, the dean's list. So you was already on the admissions list before you even was born. So, so when you think about and yet, it, 30%. It's like, wow. And yet, and yet they don't, and I think that goes back to what I've been saying from the jump. Like, what this is truly about is what they see in terms of ownership and deservingness and being innately entitled and it belonging to them because they would not see that as them getting something they don't deserve again. Because in their mind, it's mine. It's mine. It's ours. It's for us. You know what I mean? It's not about this merit and all these other things that they come up with, these metric systems when they want to criticize because they don't care about that. Because I don't know, I can't tell you how many times I've had a white person I go to school with that I outperform in every way, shape, or form suggests that I'm there because of affirmative action and all that. And, you know, and it's like, you think to yourself, how could you think that when they had a staff? Because they don't give a fuck. Because at the end of the day, what they're saying they is, care. this is for me. This is for us. This is our country. These are our schools. These are our institutions. This is our law. This is our government. That's what they make it clear. Just the fact alone that we, black people, yeah, the hell, an entire LGBTQ community, everybody right now is getting their rights rolled back because what they're telling us, what they're trying to tell us repeatedly on Wax is, this is our shit. Mm -hmm. This is ours. Anything we give you, consider it a loan, nigga. And we can't <laughs> like... even even if it's not even theirs, they're gonna they're they're always gonna claim it. It's not their issue, it's not their struggle, it's not none yeah, of it. They will still claim it. Yep. And that's why they can capitalize off of you see what we're talking about right now? You look at another platform and it's all white people having yes. the these same talking points and they will flourish you will see that more in the algorithms you'll see that well they're get they're get paid to literally say exactly what we're saying they walk yeah. how we move they will watch and study and by this exactly what we specifically say, a fourth of it and fourth yeah of it without and then no move. flavor yeah mm -hmm. the watered down 1 16th version of it that doesn't offend them personally yeah but they yeah that's true too <laughs> but they will literally say these things and be like you know and have these talking points and be like you know black people deserve and then they'll listen to us and be like this and this and this and this and this and this and all the white people will be like we're such Ooh. allies because and we're it, learning this from that. white people yeah, it's really ridiculous. And it's worse. You know what's worse? They'll do you one worse. They'll do you one worse. They'll steal the the, the white liberals or whatever, the white man, whoever. They think yeah. they'll steal, you know, a handful of the talking points from us. And then they'll bring on a coon to the show for the coon to be saying and legitimizing all the anti-blackness and all the coon. The and then they're there. It's, it's me. But he's it's black. It's black. Me. Good look, shiny white black, liberal. So oh, I'm outraged. <laughs> How could you think that about your brother? And... Very selective. Yeah. <laughs> Very right. selective. And they do that on purpose because if we have somebody Man. black, this is my black friend and my black friend said it because I couldn't say it. So, and the audience is like, that's why I like, here, the, here we go, that black person. He's yes. different. Yes. That black person. It's that one black person in the group. He's not like the rest. And that brings us back um, to rules of racial standing. Derek Bell, right back to yep. it. Of the and I, and I want to yep. very quickly just like mention the point as this all goes back because yet again from the outside looking in because despite me being born in New York, I, I can't claim nothing over there. 
Um, and the fact being, you go, back to, <laughs> you go back to John Locke. Like, I want to draw the line in the sand very much. It's very American core centric. And I mean, like, if you go back to John Locke, life, liberty, and the pursuit of property. And let's like, let's like not change it. Let's not um, equivocate with what they actually mean. And yet again, going right back to it, black folks were brought there, rendered from their, rendered from their actual tribes and brought there. By no means were they citizens. And yeah. yet again, like when we talk about like everybody's rights being rolled back, it's being, it's literally, they, they've told you this, make America great again. And when we were talking about, if you go back to the founding fathers, initial di um, discourses, blackness was not at the table. Yes. It was never supposed right. to be in the plan. This, in the, the, even the exercise of debating it, and this goes back to the Afro pessimism, can sometimes be an act in, in futility. Exactly. In, in itself, because right. like you're, you're acting as though like there's some recourse, some redress, even King somewhat optimistic to think that you can hold people to a law that never really existed for you. Back. And for it, Toni Morrison backs you up in that regard. Toni Morrison said the I same thing. Her. She said that in its essence, racism is a distraction. It requires you to continue to justify your reason for being and continue to argue in circles about what it is, like why you are here on this earth and what it is your purpose to do. And that's what Toni Morrison said. It backs, backs you up. And, and I believe that Kimberly <laughs> Crenshaw also backs it as well when we talk about how the uh, 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 Plessy versus Ferguson as well as yeah. the Brown versus Board of Education, how when we're reading that, how the, the, the way that race is coded within the law is one that is always based on racial illiteracy. How when we talk yes. about what Plessy versus Ferguson Plessy vs. Ferguson was trying to define yes. what it meant to be black, and we see the courts yes. didn't have the capacity to understand that shit. We see that in 1950s when the Boring vs. Board of Education go, they still did not have the capacity to understand how to define race, and that's what we'll be getting at. And I feel like that right there set the precedent to make it where it's always going to be a slippery slope and a question of interpretation on how we're able yes. to define race, who gets to be race, and what it means to be black, and who gets to define what it means to be black. And I think that that's always what happens when it comes to policy and legislation about black people because you think i'm saying yeah Olay, show me in the constitution where the word race is there i i think you racially obsessed negroes just talk about race there is nowhere in the constitution that talks about race show me a 13th the 14th the 15th amendment that talks about race hey hey i bet you 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 can't tell me the constitution is racist it doesn't even talk about race they got my fucking nerves <laughs> Listen, don't get me on started. That, on that one, this has been very black. I, I adore yeah. all of you. All. Yes, I, thank I you. <laughs> thank you, my learner. No, honestly, I feel like we can, we can rap. <laughs> thank you, my my learned, learned Negroes. Well, imagine this man still, I literally go, say, let me wrap it up for him since he leave it. And oh, he's baby, still... he's, he's Caribbean. You got to go. You got to <laughs> announce, listen, on my time, see ya. <laughs> the man still does up before I can say it. I just can't believe it. Look, I wasn't even shocked. I knew he was leaving. <laughs> When he said that, <laughs> that <was like> <laughs> uh, they're not random black. It's not random black people from the street on my show. These are black people with they're like oh, that on my show would come together millions of followers, bases, platforms, right? But in his mind, a black celebrity is equivalent to a no one white person. You see oh, what I'm saying? Like that's the same level of importance of worth, right? Like he see that and he still think.